So we are the Monday after UFC 228, Woodley versus two, where Tyron Woodley was able to successfully retain his title by Dar's choke. And as you've seen from my post fight show, we already went over the uh, results of that show. But I wanted to uh, cover some of the storylines before you guys get to your uh, usual uh, Monday morning uh, shows and information. Uh, give you my guys' take on everything that did happen. So, a couple of storylines that will be coming out of this fight that I'm sure you guys will hear is, is Tyron Woodley a boring fighter? Well, Tyron Woodley was never a boring fighter. What Tyron Woodley was, was a tactician. He does what he needs to do to win um, at all costs. He looks at um, every aspect um, of his opponent, uh, figures out his weaknesses, and figures out how to exploit them. He's not out here to try to fight for the fans, and he's not out here to, uh, you know, go out for all these big bonuses. He's out here to get it done in the best way he thinks is possible. Uh, for some reason, a, a lot of people take this as him being boring, and you know, he he was a dog in his last uh, seven out of the ten fights, you know, which is crazy. You know, how how are you the defending champion? You knocked out the. Uh, the champion when you got the title um, in the first round they didn't call you boring then but then you were called boring after you uh, fought Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and Damian Maya because you didn't finish him uh, after you tore your shoulder um, but you know he was never a boring fighter uh, people will take this as that he came out when he fought uh, till as he's a he went out to go oppress the friends and put a pace on him. No, he did exactly what he felt like he needed to do to win that fight. Uh, he went out, wanted to use more of his wrestling, more of his grappling, uh, because he never saw Till grapple. Now, Till does come from a Muay Thai background, so you saw it was harder to take Till down than what Woodley probably anticipated. It's not saying that Till probably has a great takedown defense, because as you notice every time that a clinch sequence happened or every time Woodley got in on his leg he circled back against the fence so uh, he knew what he was trying to do he probably practiced that multiple times in his camp but anyways going back to it uh, Tyron Woodley's not a born fighter this is the fourth time let's see here actually since Woodley has won the title he has knocked down each opponent he has fought so, you know, keep that in mind. He's not a boring fighter. Uh, he knows what he is doing in the octagon. He's definitely going to put that, uh, put the hands on somebody uh, at any time. So, uh, he comes to win, and he's going to definitely uh, do it moving forward. So, that covers him. Jessica Andrade uh, and Tatiana Suarez. Uh, go ahead and group them up together. Both of them had impressive wins uh, over Carolina Kolakavich and Carla Espaza, respectively. Um, so what does that lead next for these two ladies? Uh, are they, these ladies looking for a collision course against each other to face each other for um, the strawweight title against Rose Nami Nunez, or does one of them go ahead and step next in? I believe that uh, Jessica gets the next shot Jessica is the number two contender. She's definitely probably in the number one spot now. Joanna probably should just go ahead and get bumped down. The rankings are uh, kind of screwy when it comes to that anyway. But uh, Jessica with a one-punch KO, you don't see that at 115 pounds. And uh, she was able to do it. Her Tatiana would be a great fight, but at this point I believe it's unnecessary. If anything, uh, if they're thinking that Tatiana would need that fight. I don't think you need to jump her up all the way up to Q. Joanna would need a dance partner. I think you'll put Joanna in Jacek versus Tatiana Suarez and let Jessica Andrade fight for the right to fight Rose Namunas next. There's no point of having Joanna fight Jessica because if Joanna does win, she won't be fighting Rose next anyway since she lost to her twice already. So if I'm playing matchmaker with that storyline, I am going to go Jessica versus Rose and Tatiana versus Jen Jacek. 
and uh, probably the biggest storyline out of the whole week, and there was no fight actually involved because the fight didn't happen, was Nico Montoya versus Valentina Shevchenko. Dana White came out saying that Tatiana, I'm sorry, that Nico was stripped of the title uh, due to her failure to make weight. And uh, Valentina Shevchenko would be fighting uh, sometime in the near future. And, you know, there is the uh, UFC 229 uh, McGregor uh, Habib card uh, coming up October 6th. And I do believe they are still looking for a main event in New York, UFC 230. Uh, Women's flyweight normally uh, is not a big enough fight to move to the top of that car, um, especially because you have Dustin Poirier versus uh, Nate Diaz slotted at the co-main, and I don't think either one of them would be too happy about that. No disrespect to those women. Uh, this just seems how, that's how the UFC is when it comes to those things. So, um, they may be on that car. Uh, they may elevate uh, Dustin and um, Nate up, but we'll see with that. But maybe that is a good spot for them to go because Valentina did cut to make this weight. She doesn't cut much weight at all. She says she normally walks around around like 136 or something like that. So she could make that quick turnaround if she chose to. Uh, but I thought they'd make that, that happen. Uh, so she is probably looking at fighting on um, the New York card. I do believe they had to find her a dance partner. Uh, Ariel Hawani believes that Yoana would be a good person for that and if that's the case Ioana is a big draw in New York so they may actually make them the main event for that fight um, as you uh, heard previously from what I was just saying I don't think that uh, I think Ioana has a better a chance to fight Tatiana Suarez uh, possibly get back in line for a strawweight title uh, for you guys that don't know uh, Ioana has fought Valentina Shevchenko three times in kickboxing and has lost all three times the first time was close the last two were was not at all um, and then there's this uh, big argument about 10-ounce versus 4-ounce gloves and skills. Uh, from what we have seen, uh, Valentina has a more robust bust game in MMA than uh, Joanna does. Um, you know, Valentina has submitted people, taken people down, used to ground and pound. She's used every tool that she has to her, her arsenal versus Joanna just stands and strikes. She doesn't mix it up at all. So I don't think that fight would go fairly well for Joanna. So I don't think that's a great idea. Uh, Sajar Eubanks has said that she wishes that to get the shot against Valentina. Um, I don't know who else really to give her the shot. Liz Carmouche has also came out and said that she is wanting to get that shot against Valentina for the vacant title. Um, you know, flyweight in the UFC is fairly new. There are, you know, a couple other uh, women who did fight at bantamweight that are down and of formal title contenders that, you know, could make a lot of good, interesting matchups. It's worth checking all those out. But going back to the stripping of Nico Montoya, uh, like I said, Dana said she, he stripped her because she failed to make weight. She had to get hospitalized, and he believed that was unfitting for a champion uh, to not make a weight and have to go to the hospital. And he said she was so far overweight, which is the reason why it led to her being stripped. All I can say is they didn't do this with Max Holloway. Max Holloway, if you all can, guys can remember, back in July, he failed to make weight, and he had to go to the hospital as well. Now, they said that that was not due to weight-cutting issues. They said that it's due to something else um, that happened during his camp, possibly concussions and things like of that nature. Well, that could possibly be true. Um, I don't know. We Nobody has the full details in regards of that. Uh, Max has said that's nothing like that has never really happened to him before. But if we all remember, uh, back when Tony Ferguson was injured back in April, um, they called on Max to make a uh, quick turnaround to fight after he injured himself um, earlier when he was supposed to fight in March, I do believe, or February uh, against Brian Ortega, he will, he was failed to be able to do that. And then they said, "Hey man, we want you to fight Habib 
Uh, Max is a big boy that has to already cut to 145. They asked him, could he make 155? He killed himself to try to make 155. He was a few pounds off, and then the UFC doctors and everything waved it off, and then asked him to make this quick turnaround to try to make weight again in July. Uh, this weight cutting is bad in MMA anyway, because what people don't realize is you may rehydrate your body, but it takes over 72 hours to really rehydrate your brain the proper way. So, you know, this is things that, you know, he needs to focus on and think about in the future. Uh, but anyway, so Dana White did not strip Max Holloway for this because uh, his failure to make weight. But he said that's the reason why he decided to strip Nico. Uh, Nico has only been the champ for nine months. Um, they said they tried to get her to fight Valentina three times, and all three times it always been some type of issues. We've had proof that she did actually have surgery because she had really bad tonsillitis, and they had to remove her uh, tonsils uh, a few months back. This is These are facts. These are proof. They also tried to rush her into a uh, fight uh, right away afterwards, and she couldn't do it. The doctors wouldn't clear her. These are facts. There's also proof of that. Um, the UFC also knew all of this. Uh, so it's really the question on why they want to get Nico stripped. They think Nico is uh, assumingly scared to fight Valentina Shevchenko after watching her, uh, her first fight um, when she fought at 125. I forgot the uh, woman's name she did fought, but it was a complete mismatch of styles. Um, Mario Yamasaki was the ref for that. He let that fight go on way too long. Um, there was like over 100 and I think 20 significant strikes landed difference. Um, and then she ended up getting submitted in the second round. But, uh, and also, I think this also leads back to Nico was not even a person that they thought was going to win. She won the title um, off of uh, Tough, um, which is the UFC's way to kind of introduce titles now to the UFC. Uh, they didn't do that with the flyweight title for men, if you guys remember that back when they had their little kind of like little round robin uh, tournament. Uh, they just kind of just introduced it as it was playing around and people knew how the tournament was going but it wasn't on the show when Demetrius Johnson ended up winning it but they, they've they done this uh, with the strawweight title with Carla Esparza won it first fight she did when she fought Joanna and MJ checking and she lost and then when she fought against uh, and then she lost Carla Esparza did after she fought Joanna and then when she um, look at Nico when she fought uh, Roxanne Montferry, and she ended up winning that. And Nico started to show off at the 14th seed. So, uh, but those are just a um, few of the storylines. Let's see how they uh, all check out today. They are a couple uh, of shows saying that Nico is going to be on a couple of shows today. Saying both sides, saying what medical things are going on, what's caused her to have. Um, her to go to the hospital, and hopefully we get a little more clarity there on later on today. My opinion may change on the matters we found that out. A Valentine did say that he never believed that fight was going to happen in the first place. But uh, it's, it's all interesting to see what we go from here. Um, always also a minus as well. UFC 230, this is still not that same main event. Tyra Wooden may do a quick turnaround. I don't believe he might be suffering any injuries. It might be interesting to see what happens with the fights. Uh, Kobe Covington, who he was originally supposed to fight, but Kobe Covington was injured, couldn't make that quick turnaround. Uh, that guy would be a great fight as well. Um, all, the, all the cars are going to be laid out to uh, pan that way. Uh, sorry to guess any basketballs and stuff like that. We've got the gym to uh, finish this workout. But I didn't get this news in while I was still fresh in my mind. But uh, appreciate you guys checking everything out for me. You know, uh, like, and like the video, subscribe to the channel below, and uh, this is how you become legendary and greatness is earned.